All right, guys. We're going to wait for uh, Tiff to come back on. We lost our other live. I didn't get a chance to save it. I am so mad I didn't get my cord in time. So let me see if I can get her back on here. And we had so many people asking us questions. Hold up. See, my live had to be the one to disappear. See? <laughs> but that's good, because I don't ever say my lives anyway. I'd be scared to go back and watch them. Because I'm always seeing some right, to say. But I wanted to at least save this one, because we had a good conversation, and we had some good questions on there, too. We definitely need good questions. I like Johnny. Him so Okay, wait, hold on. Let me turn this up. So listen, just since we have this new live, reintroduce yourself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so okay. This. Wait, let me just say this. Listen, guys. Okay, this is Coffee with Cream. Second take. We were we had a whole hour long conversation. We were going in. Everything was great. We talked about the self made movie. <clears throat> we talked about everything, and then <laughs> we. Tiff needed her charger. I needed my charger. And I then we just lost everything. I ran for mine. I got mine. <laughs> so basically, um, my name is Tiffany. I am from Philly. Yes. Um, and um, I, I, I'm a registered nurse. I yes. am known for the F Cancer clothing line. I do F Cancer, F Lupus, F Sickle Cell, yes. any disease you could think of. We make t-shirts yes. for them. We donate some of the proceeds to the um, patients and the communities. Um, I've been a registered nurse for 16 years. I own multiple businesses. I have Kisses Care Extension. I'm sorry, Kisses um, More Extensions. Um, Kisses Boutique, who sells, we sell women, women's clothing. Also incorporated my daughter's salon. She is a full service salon. She does um, hair. She does lashes, um, nails, yes. and brows, et cetera. I also have a event space that's open and should be open. And we're on a fence, not sure because of everything with the quarantine. However, um, if, it, if anything happens where we can't have event spaces for some time, then I'll just have to like make it like a little takeout, something essential, like an essential business so it can stay open. Um, yeah. Finally, I have a home care agency called Kisses Care Home Care agency where we, pro we provide services in home for elderly mm -hmm. or disabled people. Um, and your insurance usually will pay or you could probably pay. Yes. So, okay. guys, so it up. all of that. <laughs> <laughs> And, and we were um, talking for a long time and then a live went out, but you know, she was continuing. Yeah, yeah. So we weren't able to save that really good conversation that we had going on. So anybody that was watching before that has some questions, please post it down in there. We were talking about the Netflix special Self Made and how it was loosely based on Madam CJ Walker's um story. We were talking about Annie Malone and we were also talking about just women empowerment and us just doing what we needed to do to support each other and just social media and oh yes uh, and content and protecting content. yourself from people who only who already discovered you knew about you and only are coming around you for the purpose to um use you you have to be mindful yes. of it absolutely so you were saying that um it was annie malone's niece or her granddaughter that actually reached out to you when you posted that information about her and it's, asked it's, you to keep it up right annie malone's and i'm gonna take her i'm about to take her hold on her, it was her great it's her great great niece named sasha Tambo. okay um who um her name was sasha hey and another thing I had talked to somebody on Sasha Turnbull's page and because at first he was like well you know I feel like it's the movies she, he basically said I feel like it's the movies it's not the movies job to keep someone's legacy alive it's her family he felt like her family felt her so what I said to him was I said she never had any children so therefore she can't have a hey, Johnny. and I told and I said that I said that people, I said she never had any children because I told them most of the time people that keep your legacy alive, that's why they say have an heir. Have an heir. Oh, wait. Life size Barbie said my last comment was people that do their homework on you before they even meet you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, for sure. Yes. For sure. And just to use you. So the thing yeah. is, like, right now I'm successful. You're saying all that shit I didn't say I did, right? I don't have any doubt in my mind that if I didn't have children and I died, my nieces and nephews, I probably see them at funerals and shit. 
right now. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I don't have an attachment to them where they will, like, be out here, like, I'm keeping my aunt's legacy alive for 100 years because this is my aunt. Now, you may get somebody down the road and so one niece or one great nephew, like, her great great niece now, and it's like, I want to really, I'm inspired to really do more for her life, so I'm going to mm. tell people more. But if you don't have direct heirs, like children, most of the time, your life does not but listen, like they ain't see you in a long time. Wanna, but this is what I want to say, though. Why is it that we feel that way when it comes to us and our community? Because you have, like, old presidents on money. You have statues. You have all types of monuments and things that other people have put out there to continue the history of other people's communities. But when it comes to us, there's always different excuses when it comes to our history being yeah. put out there the right way. And so why like would you even say, well, that's up to her family? Why would it be up to her family? Why wouldn't we want to uplift and talk about her story? Because that's a part of our history too more than just her family but the crazy part is in, in st louis they love her like they have her parade every year mm -hmm. they give her a parade thank every you year Maria, thank louis. you i'm the same person but <laughs> but thank you <laughs> so what were you saying i said in st louis they give her a parade every year she has a school that's still standing for children that's that's yeah. in her name and st louis they know her like we know madam cj and they actually promote her like we do madam cj in mm -hmm. St. Louis, but it's not a global thing. However, she mm -hmm. did live to be 87, I believe, but at the same time, it seems to me that she was more of the people that, how we just said, that don't have any following, that's not popular, but getting money. It seemed mm -hmm. like that was her personality. So I think that's why she's not talked about, talked about, talked about, where I think Madam was more like the people on social media who is publicizing her shit. And because Annie had the first Rolls Royce in America. Yeah, no. But she didn't have a picture of it, like how Madam got her picture. You see her picture in her car? Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? I didn't see a picture yeah. of her in the Rose voice. It's just hearsay because she wasn't flashy. And it's just, and, and again, it goes back to what I said. If she decided to not be a flashy woman, but she did um, when she contribute. Gave Howard University at $25,000. Then why said, wouldn't we want to talk about her history? Yeah. Then that means even more we should talk about her history, not leave it up to her family. Yep. That's look, Johnny said, hush money model. Yeah, you said yeah. silent. What is it? Silent Fortune Mafia. Mm -hmm. But I think <laughs> like, that Howard University, all the colleges, she donated a thousands and thousands of dollars. They should be doing that shit. Because at the end of the day, she be. was really, really, she said, Joyner Lucas just did it for Will Smith. Anyone should be allowed to celebrate the champions to. of our community. I agree with yes. her, Fresh. And yes, Shelly Nista said she was private. and so, But that's what I'm trying to say. So this is what I'm going to say to y'all. And Not just because she was private doesn't mean that as a community we can't celebrate her now. No, but that's the you whole get what thing. I'm saying? The she she did what she did to leave her private. legacy so that we could talk about it. Right. She was private, but that doesn't mean that we have to be private about her legacy. But I think that what she's saying basically about her being private is like how when we first started the last live, we talked about following popularity versus success. Remember we talked about that? Yeah. So the thing yeah. is, if a person is extremely, extremely private right now today, Right now, today, you see how you said Ming mm -hmm. with the hair? Mm -hmm. I know somebody that sells bundles for $300 a bundle and literally making crazy money. They only have like 2,000 followers, mm -hmm. right? But when yeah. you say Ming, Ming Lee, whatever, mm -hmm. when you say Ming Lee, it just kicked right in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? you We knew that yeah. we were talking about because of the popularity. So if right. 20 years from now, somebody be talking about who had the hair on lock in 2020, you're going to say Ming Lee. Right, but you're not. When there could be someone that is less known than her, that probably made more money because that's how they but decided to brand themselves. Right, but they're not. They're not public people, so it's like kind of like it's not really what you're purposely doing by not talking about them. They just wasn't a person that was made themselves talked about back then. So you're not really dragging it. You feel what I mean? Yeah. But I think for what yeah. she did in the community, having seventy five thousand employees worldwide, even in the Bahamas and the Caribbean, and sitting mm -hmm. here and having a school to this day in her name and having a parade every year in her name still to this day and, and to have had the, that college that she had and donating all this money because she gave away a lot of her money because she didn't have kids. There's no yeah. reason why we didn't know her the way we knew about Madam CJ when we was going to school. And that's what There's I'm no saying is just because she decided to be private about because there are people who there are a lot of celebrities and a lot of wealthy people who donate to charity that don't broadcast it. 
But right. when it's time to tell their story, because they didn't decide to broadcast, it doesn't mean that it's not something that they aren't proud of or they don't want people to know or they don't want to be a part of their legacy. When it's time to tell their story, then it's our job to say, this person did this. This is their legacy. These are things that we should be proud of. This is something that this person started, like you said, her college and all these other things. Just because she was private and she wasn't the most popular person doesn't mean that her story doesn't deserve to be told. And if That's you want to tell it, my thing is if you want to bring somebody to light for the first time, damn it, just do it right or don't Say do it. Say it right. All. Just do it right exactly. or don't do it at all. Just don't do it. Look, Johnny said, I don't have 2,000 followers. No, but if you know Johnny, you know Johnny. So he, Johnny saying. doesn't even like, need to have a million followers. <laughs> and, and it doesn't even matter because I had 40,000 followers and still when I have an event, about 200 people tops. You feel what I'm saying? May show up, which is a lot of people, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Followers don't mean anything if it if it's not people like we said are going to be supportive, um, a part of your, a part of your brand and your vision. And some people are literally just that followers. They're just following what you're yeah. doing, just looking at what you're doing. They're intrigued yeah. by something. They're intrigued by you. They're intrigued by your content. Um, it doesn't mean money. It doesn't mean. No. Money. It doesn't equate to money. I know um, at the Revolt Fest, um, blame it on Quay, he was talking about how he was broke and he had 1.2 million followers on Instagram. Right. And he said he was really Who popular. He said his Who Instagram said? was Who popping. Said? But he said he was broke. For her and I said, a lot of people just be watching and being nosy. And that's fact. Yeah, true. Followers don't. True. Matter. Oh my gosh. Popularity don't equate money. But I, what I will say is if you unless are popular, you brand yourself to where you yeah, can I was about to say, but if you are popular and you was around somebody like you who can teach somebody how to do branding, I can teach you how to get some money if you're popular. Because you being popular, yeah. I can help you get money. But a lot of people don't have the hustle part or knowing how to brand, so they just popular. Because some people only want to be popular. But we said that about the dopamine. Yeah. Something. Remember? Some people just want to be popular. And I tell people that all the time. Like, are you doing this because you want to be popular? Or are you doing this because you want to uh, hustle? You want to make money. You want to make a living. You know what I mean? You want to utilize your brand to do what you need to do to feed your family. Because you can do both. You can be popular and feed your family. But you I feel like some you people can. just want to be popular. And that's it. Listen, me right. too. Let me tell you something. I would rather be Annie Malone, to be honest with you. Let me be rich without people knowing. <laughs> no, listen, I would too, because I would rather, and I would rather have a long life. The only thing I would have done different, well, I don't know if she could or couldn't have children, but I would have just had children. Other than that, I wouldn't yeah. care. I wouldn't, I would have loved, loved to live to be 87 years old. What if you're not popular, but popular have hustle? But then you still can you, get money. You can still get money. Because the thing is, okay, aligning yourself with people is not the same as using people. Let me say it again. Because if you align well, yourself you know what? with me... somebody that know how to market and brand and you have hustle, uh -huh. then you met your match. You met your team. Because I think, um, I don't even know if she's on this live, but I know my girlfriend, um, Key, she, she's from Brooklyn. And her and I, mm -hmm. we're like day and night you know she she brings what i don't bring and she's good with marketing it and stuff like that and i'm good with engaging people and hustling and being all over the place you know so we yeah. like this like when we met each other it was like girl hun take the business cards okay i'm gonna go over there and talk to them talk to them go over there pass that to them so it worked out sometimes you just have to yeah. meet somebody that balances you out so if you know you're a hustler you meet somebody that's good at marketing branding and you can create a team that way yeah because there are people out there that are good at marketing and branding but they don't know how to get money I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Speak to these uh, um 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 most of them commercial. This is like it's like they'll see some people I know. And you, but you know what else I was gonna say too to that fact where someone said I'm I have hustle but I'm not popular. You got to think back to like companies like Walmart and that family mm -hmm. and how wealthy they are, but. Mm -hmm. Only the people that know them know them. You don't really know who owns Target, but that person's wealthy. You know what I mean? Sure. And the, but, the, but the sad part is, and, and thank you for saying this, the sad part is they don't care either. No. No, let me say it again, because you ain't even hit the point. 
when it's our <laughs> shit, you know, when it's our shit, we got to be in the forefront. We got to know you. We got to be nice. You got to be this. You got to be that. You have to be engaged to people. You have to shake hands. You have to hug. You have to love. When they go to Target, they just go to Target to get their shit and get, get on. With me, you can't just buy the hair and go. You got to know why I look like I look, why I dress like I look, why I act like I act, why this. Uh, I ain't buying from her because I don't like her. Listen. To why her. are you Muslim tomorrow, but you're not Muslim today? <laughs> like... <laughs> Yo, that part is the funny. I hate you. I really do. They really go. They really. It's like it doesn't. It's like they don't care about the bigger companies. They're just going to shop and go. They don't care that they the prices are more elevated than a wholesale price. One thing people don't understand about retail is, there's no store in the world, not even a dollar <laughs> store, that's not charging you more than what they pay for it. Or otherwise, it wouldn't be a point in having a store. What's the point? Can we say it again? There's what is no the point? point in having a store. If you're not going to charge more than what you paid for it, hence wholesale. Hence, when you buy wholesale, most of the time you have to buy 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 at a time. That's true. So people really want to know who we are because you're black. So, wait, right. let me talk about that. She's let me right. talk about Let me make. Oh, she's right. This is what I was going to say really quickly. Wait, wait, um, wait. shout out to Sephora Hannah. She um, makes clothing and dresses and all that stuff. Okay, go, go. Who? Who? Say your name. Garments. She makes clothing. And Philly, she's really good. Okay. Right, okay. Go. Dope, go. dope. I was going to say um, the other thing about self made, uh, putting the two women against each other the way they did, there's, we have enough negativity surrounding black businesses as it is. And there's always people saying, um, but this is why I don't shop at black home uh, stores because I went to this one store uh, that was owned by a black person. It's like, when one black company does something <laughs> to you, all of us do something to you. And it's like, mm -hmm. we have to find a reason to support black people. And we have to have a list of things that a black company has to do in order for you to support them. You but people, shop at, duper. But wait, wait, people shop at Walmart every day. And how many memes come out about the net certain walmart's being nasty they're not not being enough cashiers like people have complaints about walmart every day but they still go they still won't go they, they still, still go. go to walmart so it's like having movies like this come out where every little thing the, you're nitpicking every little thing about these two business women we yeah, get, I, just, I, just, I think, think what you said you touched on a great topic about just stating that what for said is Black businesses are always going to be under more scrutiny by black people. They, their expectation of us is more. Um, they require, like, when you go to a black nail salon, they can't just open up. Look at this. I forgot to lock the door. Oh. <laughs> All right, go tell Daddy to make your popcorn. Here, go tell him to put it in the microwave. Tell him to put it on two minutes. <laughs> so, I apologize. <clears throat> um, That's okay. okay. I forgot to lock the door. Um, <laughs> when Irene got the charger. Um, the thing is, they just, like, if they have a black nail salon, when they go in the nail salon, they be having champagne, all type of crystal massages for your hand. They doing, like, um, milk baths for your feet and all the shit that they got to do. Just for you to come and do the, support that black business. It's, it's not fair. Because when you go to the nail salon, I've been going to the same, and I'm, me too, I've been going to the same little neighborhood nail salons for years. Mm-hmm. And they, they literally, you walk in and you just be waiting for them to call your name and you get your nails and your feet done and you go. There's no yep. extra special treatment. They're not giving champagne. They're not giving any type of milk baths. They're not massaging hands with crystals and all the shit. But the black salons will have to do all of that just for you to come. Yeah. And they have to charge more because they're not getting as much business as the other ones. Just exactly. off the fact that they're And they will be quick to say, nah. Nah, Tiffany, Tiffany charged $55 to do my nails when I could just go over here to Ling Ling and then she only right. charges me 20 right Yeah, here. because Tiffany Tiffany got crystals and wine and, wine and milk baths. And... We got a happy hour and shit. Listen, when I had my first store, I had happy, <laughs> look, I'm a big on happy hour. I had Patron, um, Hennessy, all the top shelf drinks, right? And I would have to have happy hour on Fridays and, sa Fridays and Saturdays on like the big money days. I would have free happy hour from 5 to 7, every Friday and Saturday, because I knew they'll come drink for free. And once you drink, you shop. Yeah. But right. it's like you have to have some type of gimmick 
or something for them to support what you have going on. And it, and it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. You should just, if you have the product and you're giving a good service, just get the service, get the product, and get the fuck. Like, that's how you yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Because, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I've you look at our neighborhoods and you see the type of... You you see the type of stores that other races will put into our neighborhoods, and we'll go to the gas station and get our and have them slip us our chips through some glass. <laughs> you know, we can't yep. even walk in certain gas stations. You know, it's a lot of stores in black neighborhoods that are dirty. They don't even upgrade it. You know, they don't even carry the same listen, brand listen, of products Asians, that other stores Asian carry, and we right will now. go. And stop and yeah. keep them in business. But if you opened up a corner store in the neighborhood or you opened up a gas station, you went to Tiffany gas station, it's nasty as hell in there. It's been nasty when the other people had it. Yeah. <laughs> but you but were okay listen, with that. that. Have you ever tried to take your food back to an Asian store because it was wrong? No. Try it one day. Okay. <laughs> you was wrong for even coming in there trying to take the food back. Like, don't even yeah. play with me. Whatever I gave you, you better take it and get get on, cause that's just that. <laughs> it's it's real. Yeah, it's real. I they usually eat the same thing, thing, and I go to my thing. They don't even want to so. give you extra sauces. They don't even want to give yeah. you extra. It's like it's like a war just to go into a store and shop, and they're still going to continue to support their store. Where I yeah. all like it's the like you go in their store and they're watching you. They're they're watching your every move. Everything is locked up. Nothing is in, within your reach, and we're okay with that. But when right. you open up your boutique or your store, mm -hmm. it's scrutinized. It's like I went to Tiffany's store. It wasn't even cute. See products that's been in there forever, and you still go in there and shop. But what I will say about me. Because I, I feel like God has really blessed me when it comes to business and stuff. Because I honestly cannot keep anything that I ever, ever sold in my stores. I sell out of everything. Now, I don't have a lot of people. You know, you see the comments. A lot of people don't care for me. You yeah. know, a lot of people talk shit, whatever. But I honestly got anything that I post on my page, if I'm selling it, the people that fuck with me, they'll buy it. They'll buy it. Yeah. And, and it's just like, I just say, I've seen that. that. You see it, right? And like, I'm be like, and it's still yeah, sold yeah. out. You see me, Patty. And it's still sold out. Have a nice day. Thanks for coming out. God bless. Good night. You know, but it's just a shame <laughs> that we do that to our black businesses. <laughs> because I just think everything is funny. So it's hard to like hurt my feelings. But I just think that black businesses, unfortunately, they just that's just what you have to understand and you have to know. And I don't know why it's like that. And, and back to the movie, I think it's just a self hatred within our own communities. Then make thank the, you, Johnny. He said he's giving us some merch. <laughs> Please do what he sell. Oh, shit. what do he sell, Johnny? Johnny, he can sell water to a well. Oh, he's been there, but <laughs> but um, no, he has his silent fortune mafia. Uh, he's got the hoodies and the t shirts and stuff. And uh, he he um, you say he's up a record label, like Johnny did a lot of stuff in the music business, so right. Can know. I say something else? Have you ever seen an yep. agent store have a book bag drive? An agent store have a what? Book bag drive. No. For the community. Have you ever seen them come out and feed people or do like any type of iftar, give anybody anything? No. I mean, ever. Have you ever seen no. them? I, I, some, most of the time, I just think they live up serious. I never even seen them walk out the front door and close up sometimes. But honestly, no. have you ever seen them? Get back for you, like you know how they do, like the Christmas stuff, whatever. Have you ever seen them do that? No. Oh, okay. Have you ever seen them come out even when you shut the block down and do the block parties, and then they have like a little tent for the kids to jump up and down on? Nope. Say it again. You can say it again. No. No. No, not at all. No. And you know what's crazy? And they're because... never going to be held accountable for doing the shit either. Ever. That's the part. That's the part. And that's why I said that. We can't continue to support and put out movies that um, perpetuate division because <laughs> we already have that in our neighborhoods. We already have enough yeah, people that don't horrible. support us. It's we already horrible. have enough enough things that we have to compete with that for us to continue to perpetuate competition between each other, especially women. Like, that's the last thing that I want to do is to have to go in and have to compete with another black woman just because her complexion is different than yeah, mine. I that's really stupid. Don't, 
yeah and it's just like and i and you know we are we can be considered biased because we are from the other side of the spectrum but the other week i know you were on here with someone of a darker complexion and i and i i understood everything she said and i agree with everything that she said i didn't disagree with anything that yeah. she said and i felt like she's seen things from both spectrums however you know coming from our spectrum i think that people don't take they can't receive the message either the reason why i got so much backlash is because they can't receive it from me right that's what i'm trying to yeah. say you know what's crazy bloggers, like, i'm not a blogger but other bloggers of dark skin was posting the same shit their comments was way different it was like yes yeah. that's ridiculous and i see it i think one girl named Demetri, i think she's from la she inboxed me too well, messaged me too mm -hmm. and she was on the same type vibe i was on like she didn't like the narrative she didn't like the way they depicted the people she didn't like the way they made made them to jason like she didn't need a man you know like, we can't do two things at one time like we can't have a su right. successful relationship and run businesses and i have one and this just walked in the door asking about popcorn you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's just like yes. you can but and, and she said all of that stuff and demetri was like they was on her thing like yeah 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 I post the same shit. And it was like, I had somebody I went to school with that physically was like, when she see me, she gonna beat me up. Are you serious? Yes. And I'm sitting here like, girl, because over being dark skin and light skin, like, are you retarded? And we fought to be 30, like, we 36 years old. Like, I'm not, this, it's, it's retarded. It's, it's that crazy. is crazy. That is crazy. It's really crazy. So I think <laughs> they cannot receive the information because of the messenger. A lot of times it's the messenger. The messenger that's giving the information, if they are coming from a place where they feel like that person may have more or think she's better or even light skin, I can't let you talk about light and dark because, bitch, you already light and I, you already getting on my last, on the last nerve. And then a nerve yeah. is going, you know, and I really believe yeah. that that's the reason why it got so much backlash like it did. I really do. Yeah, I think so too. And, and your complexion, like I said, just there's a lot of stuff that people that I notice that people come to your page and they're mad at you about. And I remember <laughs> one time you told I remember one post where you were like, for, for all y'all, excuse me, like, for all y'all bitches is mad about my body, get your money up and go get yours exactly <laughs> how you want it to be. Why are you mad when there's ways for you to fix things on, on your body that you hate? Why don't you just go get your money up, sis, and go fix your body, and then you could be happy too? <laughs> Said. <laughs> no, and, just, and, and, I mean, but you know what's bad about me? My, the bad about the bad about me. My girlfriend said is my responses be too harsh or something. She said, she said I be hurting people's feelings because I'm saying it too harsh. But I'm like, they started with me first. That's such a kitty response. But their feelings were already hurt before you even responded to them. I just want you to um, I just want you to let me live the way I wanna live and do what I wanna do and just be who I wanna be without you like putting your insecurities on me. You know, that's how I feel. You know, and and not just the business, even with me being a nurse, like it's nurses, like I've seen on pages like when they talk about me real bad. And then the nurses be like, yeah, she gives us a bad name because she won't just be a nurse. Bitch, like, why I got to just be subjected to, like, I only have to clock in. And if, if I went to school and became a nurse and graduated and got more degrees and actually excelled and really am a nurse documented and have a, have a license from the state of Pennsylvania, why do I only have to do that? Why can't I host events? Why can't I own a boutique or why can't i sell hair or where, why can't i because you want to know why? why because they because they can't they don't know how to do more than one thing so because they don't know how to do more than one thing they expect you really? to not know how to do more than one and thing and that's what I feel, but wait, I feel like you can't he said wait someone said, said color is, is a long issue, issue, that, issue is. that is um silicone um wait what is it Industry decide was marketable. I'm sorry, the light is burning on mine. Industry decide yeah, was But listen, one thing I did notice about society now is it's popular to murder whoever society says is the top dog. And it's yeah, popular yeah. to uplift what society used to say was the underdog. Like, Lizzo. I people, will tell you this. People be fake. Like, oh, she looks amazing. Her, even though she's naked with a thong and letting her twerk at the game, that's amazing. That's all it. If I did that same twerk at that damn game with this ass popping up and down, you'll be like, that was the most provocative, disrespectful shit to do in front of some 10-year-old kids. Am I being honest? But but there were people that did say that about no, her, too. No, but I'm just saying, it wouldn't even been no whole, like, 
it wouldn't yeah. have been that many supporters of it. Because it's, no, it's I got you. Because you know what else I feel? It's not respectful for, for a family event at all. Yeah. And, and you know what, though? Um, you're right about that because if, okay, um, for our radio stations page, <clears throat> a lot of my bloggers, like, they follow a lot of different people in the industry to keep up with, like, the latest news or whatever. And there was this one young lady from one of those reality shows, and she hosted... Um, Life Sizes, I know. Nice. She was like a black girl's... It was called a Brown Girl's Brunch. That's what she called it. If so I want to say Light Skin Girl Brunch, though... Hold up, wait, wait. Let me... Because you, you know what I was going to say. Listen. So it's at Brown's... Brown Skin... It said Brown Girl's Brunch. And she took, she posted a picture of all the girls that attended. And she said, I, I feel so grateful that I've come this far in my life that I'm able to, I've always wanted to do this, but I never had the platform. I never had the money, but I finally was able to do this brunch, the Brown Skin Girls Brunch. And she posted the picture of the group of ladies. Man, Where is that this? Was what's, the, what's the name of this page? Uh, her name is Suki. So, oh, oh, the one that they just did on like Miami thing? That one? Yes. Yeah, so, but this was before they even put the show. This was before they even put the episode. This was like okay. the beginning of this month. She posted the picture of everybody. Man, okay. the comments said, "Why is it called Brown Skin Girls Brunch when there's only two dark skinned girls? Everybody else on here is light. They're not black. They're light skinned. What? This doesn't make any sense. This we can't have anything. How is it a Brown Skin Girls Brunch when it's just you and one other brown skinned girl? I thought it was for black girls. What? And then people. Man, listen, there were so many girls in the comments like, so because I'm light-skinned, you mean I'm not black? No, this says brown-skinned girls brunch. But I'm like, but if we made a brunch that said light-skinned girls brunch, you'd be mad. Wait, I'm confused. So, man, they were pissed off that light-skinned girls were invited to the brown-skinned brunch. And she said, this is for all black women Brown skin comes in different shades. They said, nah, sis, brown skin women don't come in light skin. No, they did not say that. I, I promise. I they did they were mad I'm that light skin girls. For a second, because I gotta go look. I gotta look. <laughs> they yeah. were mad that light skin girls got invited. Are y'all serious? Like Suki was really on there like arguing with people, saying, Don't come on my page with this nonsense. Like this was supposed to be a positive event. But it was more arguments on the page that there was more light-skinned girls at the event than there were dark-skinned girls. So they told her she needed to change the name of it to something else because it wasn't enough black girls there. It was just two of them. Yeah, I'm on here now. <laughs> it's it's like you got to scroll all the way down. I don't even no, know if you really the am. picture. Oh, we going to leave it. Okay, wait. No, I see some. There's a lot of comments on there. This is crazy. It, but we all, we all are some shade of brown. So I would invite women of all shades. Wow, exactly. Oh, look. So look. Uh Fair says she saw it. Some and Fair kind of said in terms of black businesses, the social contract is different within the community. People are praying the familiarity out of ways the need for payment. When you own a business as a black true. Black people feel like because you're black and I'm black, we should have and then a black. Everybody's your cousin. Everyone has that, they, they, they said one of the. They said one of the women was was white, but the lady is saying actually she's not white. She's black, but this is based on imitation of life. If you are mixed or whatever, you may look white sometimes and not black, and then sometimes you may look yeah. black and not mixed. You yeah. know what I mean? But so it goes black, back to what you were saying about. It all depends on who people feel like is the underdog or who they feel like they want to support. Because on one hand, you say that there's light skin privilege, but on the other hand, you still put us down <laughs> when it comes to certain things in the community. And it's just like, well, which one is it? Which one do you want? Like, as a community, we got to come together and figure out, do we want unity or do we want division? And then if we right. want division and we, we want unity, you know, do you want do you want light-skinned girls to feel like they have privilege or are better or light-skinned people that have privilege or are better? Or do you want us to come together as one? Because when we try to come together as one, you still tell us, that we're well, separate. I think so what they already have the feeling inside of them that we think we better than even when we say things that that they may say, it's they'll say, Oh, remember the acting light skin era? When they were like, You acting light skin, you acting light skin, you acting light skin. It was like a long time. People still say it yeah. sometimes. 
And it was yeah. okay to say it because in there, because it, because stereotypically, a light skinned person is bougie, stuck up, thinks she the shit. Right? That's what you believe. That's what's been that's, that's what's what been taught. Believe. That's what's been taught. Yeah. So even if you are just a prideful person that care about yourself and just think like think you're amazing, like you should think you're amazing. Like why don't you think you're amazing? Yeah. I think that yeah. you're only allowed to be that way if you're not light skinned. True. True. I think you only can do it if you're not like because I was like even when and I and I think this, that's not fair. Yeah, Wait, Johnny said it. He said he periodically gives out uh discount codes and people still want the hookup. Yes, and with Lynch syndrome, you're absolutely right. I we always want the hookup from each then, other. Like I don't understand. Why do you want? The I don't hookup? understand. Why do they we want wait? The hookup? We want the hookup, but then we'll get online and say that I just paid seven fifty for this Ferragamo belt. Right. But if it was a hush money Johnny belt, <laughs> you would want a hook, you would want the hookup. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't get it. It's either. the same materials. Listen, it's the I same remember, remember quality craftsmanship. I remember my store. Everything in my store remember, was forty nine ninety nine. The whole yeah. store, remember? Yeah. And then I do like yeah. The whole store forty nine ninety nine. Hey, what's up, promo push? And they still want. They still and it's the most the most bag carrying, red bottom wearing chicks that be like, um. Oh, that's forty nine ninety nine. Y'all don't have anything for like thirty. And on this, and it's like, how? I don't. Get you it. walked in with a Gucci purse, this. But what? that's how it is. I just, I think it's just, it's in us to believe that whatever we are putting out in the world is not as valuable. Like yeah. if you made a designer bag tomorrow that was the same quality, the same material as Louis Vuitton, the same like. Mm -hmm. See, the thing about. Is it is cheap forty nine ninety nine a whole store is forty nine ninety nine. It's, it's affordable. Yeah, it's affordable. But if you but the thing is, no, don't get me wrong because I wear materialistic bullshit. Okay, but I will say <laughs> this. I will say this. My quality of my shit, it is different than cheap than cheaper stuff. It is mm -hmm. because I've had pocketbooks that I've given to my children that I've had as a teen, like speedy bags and stuff like that. And they yeah. last longevity wise. I remember when I didn't spend a lot of money on my purses, I was going through like six and seven purses a year. Mm -hmm. Throwing them in the trash. Because they wouldn't right. last. They would tear, they would rip. Like, you know, I carry my gun in there. I got all these shit in there. I need a, a sturdy bag. You know what I mean? And believe it or not, yeah. those bags are handmade and they are sturdy. So I know they are super right. duper expensive, but it is a rationale behind it. And it actually increased the value and you can sell them. I've sold bags I don't want anymore online and got just as much as I paid for them after I worn them for two, three years. Yeah. You so, have a resale value. But, 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 but let me as fuck. And we do, but we do have to talk about this though. But Johnny Johnny said, uh what did he say? Oh, true. You send people the link. That's just like when people talk to me like, Cream, I need you to help me out. Uh, you, I, I see you be doing this, this, and this. Okay, well, here's my fee. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> you oh, don't talk to me anymore. Into, but I do want to say this, bus, though. <clears throat> I do, I do want to say this, too, about us that we have to stop doing, too. We have to stop trying to take shortcuts and charging more and for the shortcut. And we have to stop stealing from our basically yes we got to stop stealing from our community because we will sometimes go some people some black businesses will go and get the cheapest thing ever and charge right. a ridiculous amount of money and you're basically stealing from your own people because we Devon will try to the other day and he said we all try to finesse that's what i'm gonna say we have to stop yeah. trying to come up we always want to sit down and say what's the finesse this time like why are you trying to finesse your people because yeah, when i'm trying to come thing, up with the finesse when i did, you say? <laughs> when I did the whole clothing thing and i made everything 49.99 it ruffled so many feathers like people couldn't believe that i was charging the price i was charging they couldn't believe it because most people are charging the same shit I would sell for $4.99. They're selling for Thanks, hundreds, of dollars, hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. So it became like, damn, we want to hustle it. We want to hustle it. But I really feel like for what you pay for, if you include shipping or whatever, $49.99 to me was like, it was it was substantial. Like It was like I still made a great profit and I sold out of everything I had. And mm -hmm. I think when people realize that, they'll understand that you'll sell more. You'll sell more of it, even though you're making like like then to upcharge. And Deval made an interesting point the other day because he said, "Look at all these people slashing their prices fifty percent off." It just goes to show you that before this whole quarantine, they were overcharging from the beginning. Exactly. You were overcharging exactly. people from the beginning. 
I don't, and then I think one other blessing I have and a lot of people don't have is I have more than just these hustle businesses to make money. So a lot mm -hmm. of times when somebody may only have a boutique, they may have to charge more because one, the overhead. Right. You know, and the fact that they. But that's fine if you're charging more, but at least let it be of quality. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think you should have a business that you have rent for. I don't right. say this again. Right. I'm gonna say this again because a lot of people understand. Unless you have something where it pays itself, like a hair salon with a stylist are paying you as well, it's not just you mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should have an overheaded clothing boutique because right now, and it's not a central business, and the shit is closed. You still do have it to online. Your I, I feel but like you know what? Online, I feel like people up. do that because they feel like they need to show people that they're doing something. And it's like, why do you care enough about what other people think that you would rather put yourself in debt than yeah. I just don't to just do what you need to do that's right for um, you? Because do it online. Online books, boutiques do just fine. You actually make more. If you're not ready to have the overhead, but don't you make more put money. yourself listen, in that position. Listen. Listen, you make more money having an online boutique for the, like, boutique clothes. Because everybody's shopping at the same little places or whatever, ordering the same little shit. But you make more money by having a boutique. Like, when I had my boutique, a lot of people didn't know. I co-op space in my daughter's salon and took one of the rooms out of the salon, put a bed shop up, mm -hmm. and put the merchant on rectangle hangers. On the, like, the Dude, hangers. Like, what's up? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> the thing is, people don't understand that. I didn't really have to pay much for that space because it was a part of the salon that we already are running a business out of. You feel what I mean? Right. But if I had to go get a whole storefront for $1,200, $1,500, $2,000, some people are paying $2,500 a month for clothing boutiques, I would never do that. I just will never when, when it's such a big market for online right now. Like some of the biggest companies, Kmart and um, Barney's and First shit, of all, of Amazon is making a killing right now. So <laughs> why would you online. even... Everything open up a online. storefront when you have to compete with Amazon. Like everything is online. All you have to and do also, is get Amazon a allows you to p sell your merch on through them also, and they do all the shipping. They handle all of the card information, the fraud, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. All I you have to think, do is pay a fee. You just have to pay a fee. But I think, but see, I think and, that's a little bit too advanced for people who like to have cash in their hand because they don't want to report it. So I think that's because you got to be honest, like we still, you know, we're still black women. That's like, it's a secondary thing. They have children. So some people just want to do like, you know, money. I would still only get like, you know how they have those co-op spaces when there's only like 300 a month for a room inside of a building. I would set yeah. my backdrop up in there, $300 a month, set my backdrop up in there, have all my merch in there and have it as a pickup location. I'll meet you outside once you pick what you want. You right. can do that too. True. You can do that too. Listen, I hope people are paying attention to this. I hope you guys have been taking notes because we've been dropping gems. Yes. So you better have been picking them up. Yeah, but a full, full $2,000 a month <laughs> overhead with electric, with gas. And most of the time, if you are a business, you have to pay your water too. Like mm -hmm. all of it, all of it for you to sell clothes to people. And then you got to pay all these people. It's not that you're not really making as much profit as you would have. Like she said, a studio. You get a studio anywhere mm -hmm. from $300 to $600 a month. $300 to $600 a um, month. Oh, Miss Fancy said, I didn't know about Amazon. That was definitely Jim. Yes. yes. You can yes. go to Amazon. You can apply to you have apply. a business account through Amazon. Yeah. So, you can sell your stuff <clears throat> I mean, if you want more information, just send me a DM and I can give you the stuff. But yeah, you can yeah. have a storefront through Amazon yep. and it's a complete business page. And you can also. And you can do eBay. Um, and you can do eBay. If you. But the other thing with Amazon, though, if you shop through Amazon, you can also have a mini store on Amazon or whatever you purchase through them. You can have other people purchase those same items through your links and you get a percentage of the you get a percentage of pay from people who like, let's just say you went in and you bought some leggings and you like them. You can say, hey, I bought these leggings through Amazon. I really like them. You know, if you let me show you how they look and let me do a little bit of demonstration, whatever If you like mm -hmm. these. I'll put my link in my bio and you can buy these same leggings. If somebody purchases those leggings through the link you put in your bio, then you get money off of that purchase. So, so listen, so there's a lot of like, ways to make like there's a lot of ways to hustle. But listen, is this like what TL say? How when you put the link in your bio and then somebody buy you get money from. So that's the same thing with Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you put the link in your bio, you get money from it. So it's multiple ways to make make income without going outside. 
quarantine. Man, listen. This quarantine is for hustlers and creators. Listen. listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Everybody's so like, I can't wait for this to be over. I'm like, bro, I'm having fun. <laughs> Everybody keeps saying they can't wait for it to be over. And I done had full-fledged happy hours, parties, get-togethers. You're welcome. I've been making money and everything. Sitting in the house. Yeah. Sitting in the house. Yeah. I've been on live with people like Tiffany. No, listen. Dropping jewels. <laughs> I'm telling you. Hey, Henry. Dropping jewels. That's Leon. Jewels. Let me tell you about Henry. Yeah. Let me tell you about myself. There's something that nobody knows that I never really share much. But when I was 17, I wanted to be a pathologist. So I used to work in a morgue. I used to assist in autopsies and do like with the cadavers and cutting them open and taking like parts of the heart, parts of this, parts of that, putting them in specimen mm -hmm. containers mm -hmm. for research. Uh -huh. So this guy right here, Henry, we used to do the autopsies mm -hmm. together. We used to do the autopsies together. We would really literally be cutting bodies open and eating food and everything. Like nothing was going on. But I, I, he he's the reason why I'm a nurse because I asked him, I said, well, I really want to do this. He was like, Tiffany, if I would, if I was you, I would get into nursing because you can be multiple different levels of nursing, and you can be ER, you can be a, a um, oncology nurse, you can be this, you can change your um, specialties. And he's the reason why I stopped doing the autopsies and went into nursing. But he's on here okay. now. So. But yes, yes. all right, Henry, shout out to Henry. I'm scared to get people. But, scared to get but people Taylor, yes, you're right. Nothing is free. Taylor said nothing is free. People think everything should be free to start. No, like, no, you have to invest in yourself, whether it's $5, $10, $500. You have to be willing to invest in yourself. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, then don't even start because you really need, it takes money to make money. And the other thing about it is that there's a lot of free information out there. There are lives like I'm doing with Tiffany right now with people that will share this type of information. But after you get that free information, then you have to be willing to make that investment to move right. forward on what you're trying to do. And no, then, but I really think Taylor, but Henry, Henry, shout out to Henry though. Shout love, out to Henry. <laughs> yeah, I love I love Henry. His name's Leon. Uh, he used Henry, that's his version of Leon Henry. But I um mm -hmm. the money part too. People think you could just open up a business, right? And you just gonna make all this money just because you open up a business, but they don't have any money to put into their business. So certain right. businesses, you have to decide which business is best for you. Because you don't want to be one of those people that you're using. People that orders product and merch off of other people's money. And now they're in, you're indebted to those people at that point. So therefore, when they're constantly calling and calling you a scammer and saying that they've been waiting for their product forever, because you sat here and waited for them to give you the money and then order it, and now they're waiting seven to ten weeks for the shit. But you, you that goes that back to having integrity, too, because if, if you if bigger businesses will say, this is a pre-ordered item, you're pre-ordering it. You're paying for no, it for now. Sure. It's going to ship on this for day. Sure. But we, that's where not have, that's where being, that's where having integrity and not letting your pride get in the way. Because some people let their pride get in the way that it affects their integrity, which means you were so something. prideful that you didn't even want to tell people that you don't have the merch the and truth, that they're pre ordering. You don't have the merch. And if you tell people up front, you have to give, get, let me choose whether I want to support you or not. And those people may still support you just for being honest. You may get more support. For sure. And see, I'm just a big person. You be me being Muslim, too. We believe that if somebody gives oh, you their money, they have... Oh, I love money. you, too. First, I'm a, wait, I'm going to touch on Farhana, and I'm going to touch on Ms. Shanti real fast after I finish this point. But me being Muslim, we believe that if you give me money, you have rights over me. Like, you have the right to call me and ask me about your shit, because I have your money now. So I, my dad was I don't like that me. pressure. I don't like that pressure. So I'm a person yeah. that I will spend my own money, and I stock my store... When I did have my, well, I still have my space. When I had my little space, I had my store fully stocked like a regular store where you come in and shop off the rack and go. I don't owe you shit. Mm -hmm. You gave me my shit and you have a blessed day. Because if exactly. I owe hundreds of people money and I die, I still owe you your money. That's how, that's what we believe. Right. Unless you relieve me from the debt, I owe hundreds of people thousands of dollars, and I never want to be that way. And now my family so, has to take that on. And your family will have to take on your debt. That's what we believe. Yeah. So that's why I don't yeah. really do a lot of pre-ordering or any of that stuff. Now, granted, some of my yeah. girls be like, no, as soon as you post it and sell out, I'm giving you my money whether you want it or not. So I say, okay, yeah. I'll take your money. 
But for the most part, I can't. But see, that's you being upfront and honest, and that's your that's you and how you handle your integrity. Really and there's do. nothing wrong with that. I really do. I'm big and I feel like though there are people that may sell pre order items, but have integrity and say, "This is pre order. I don't have this right now. Right, this is the date, right and I'm going to get it." Exactly. Do that. About confidence. She said she needs a plan and she needs confidence. What would you say to her? Um. Wait. And your confidence. Hold up. It says, and you need a plan and confidence. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Like, oh, I feel like what you, what you have to do for people that don't have a plan or confidence, first of all, I would say work on your confidence first, and then we can get to the plan. Because you can't really have a solid plan if you don't have enough confidence. That's, that's how I feel. Because right. no matter what we plan out, in the back of if you don't have confidence it doesn't i don't care how much planning we do your lack of confidence is not going to allow you to actually plan properly so you and gotta work like, your like confidence you defeated faster because the first person that's how you you're not shit you won't already be feeling like you're not ready right. for it. Yeah. or the first time that the plan fails you're already down you've already beat yourself up and you have to understand as you know being an entrepreneur that happens so I would say build your confidence in yourself first and then start working on that plan because once you put your plan out there and you start putting your plan in motion, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to come at you and tell you that you can't do something, that you can't do it. They're, gonna, they're going to <clears throat> push their insecurities off onto you. So if you're coming out with your plan with the lack of confidence and all these things and distractions and people come at you, you're going to stop what you're doing because you didn't go into it with confidence first. So I would say find different ways to build confidence. And Another thing I about would, the... Go ahead, but ahead. I would transition this into therapy. Like, I feel like black people are now being unafraid to go to therapy. There's nothing wrong with going to therapy. Mental health is important. It is. And there's nothing wrong with getting a therapist to work through all those things that are going on inside of you. And there's stuff that might be going on inside of you that you didn't even realize. Traumas that came from when you were a kid that you probably don't even remember. And it's affecting your adult life. So going to therapy helps bring those things out so you can work through them and be a better adult, a better parent, a better partner, a better person within the black community. So working on yourself and working on your mental health helps the overall picture for everybody in the community, not just yourself. So and for her not as far as you, <laughs> do not come into business thinking that your friends is going to support you. Don't do no. it. Cause she just said a question was, or you become upset because your because your friends don't support you. And that's where people have to stop too. Like, stop making your friends and family responsible for your success. It's not their business. It is not their brand, and they don't have to support you if they don't feel like it. You know, because like again, Walmart versus Target. I'm a Target person. Okay, I like Target. I like the way the store looks. I like the stuff that they sell. I like the service. I just like Target. Period. I'm a Target person. I don't. I, that doesn't mean I will. That doesn't mean I've never been to Walmart. But you can't get mad at me if you're selling. If, if my friend has a Walmart business and I'm a Target person, I support. I'm pass out your flyers. <laughs> I'll repost. I, I will support you 100. percent But some people but you have to, True. Some people but I'm just saying you have to. People have to stop going into things in their life with the thought that their friends and family have to support them. That's not their business. You have to go into everything that you're doing as if your friends and family won't support you so that when they do, that's just an added bonus. I just want to say, I'm, a, I'm really blessed because a lot of my friends and my family have supported myself. Not consistently mm -hmm. or not like every last thing that I do, but majority of the time, they have supported me. So I just something my friends and family support myself because it's usually but she don't feel me. You can't so when she starts doing her own mom didn't support me um exactly but I, right, but because I, I, wait, I want to say it again because I know a lot of my friends is on this live and I don't want to get cursed the fuck out later so I'm just going to be honest my friends and my family support my shit I, they do no they really do don't get me wrong I do have a couple people that I do know that has never like been anything, but they don't matter because the people, majority of the people, they have supported my stuff. Even if they came yeah. for something or you know post my stuff, they have. And I know Renee's on here. For her, is my friend. Like besides Barbie, mm -hmm. she she I became her friend through selling stuff. 
and we are like this. Yeah. Like, she comes to my home. She's been in my houses. Her daughter comes to my shit. She calls me mom, her daughter. And this is just from like selling stuff. You know? Yeah. So I can't and those, that shit. and those are the people that you have to embrace like you did. And I right. think that that's the issue too is like people are like and my cousins. You you didn't you didn't you didn't and this is like you gotta just focus on the people who are supporting you and the people who aren't supporting you will either come around or they won't. And you have to be okay with whatever oh, decision so wait, they make. So for her, now listen. You see what I'm saying? She went you have to be with. CJ. Listen, she went through a Madam CJ situation with her mom. So her mom sold, right? Mm -hmm. Her mom taught her how to sell because that's her mom. Shit. You be me your mom. Hey, you're mom. absolutely right. So they used to sew together. And when she started sewing on her own, her mom was upset. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the same thing as what happened with any mom. Because it wasn't a secret ingredient. But but that too a lot of times your your close the people that a lot of times your family can be worse than people who don't know you because sometimes people in your family feel like well, we came from the same background we came from the same thing how could you feel like you're better you're doing it better you could be successful how could you be successful when I'm not successful we came from the same place it's like what's this I did what I needed to do you can do the same thing I should be motivation for you to to, to see that you can get this done not right. the, the the you know it the shouldn't, in your it shouldn't be a battle but me yeah, personally if you really want to ask me something I do not believe I do not believe in going in the business of people. Ever. And people yeah. when I say this, they always be like, Really? Ever. Unless you are like my significant other, like husband or something, and it's like we are you invested in me, you know, financially, whatever, but still you let me take some reins at the run things we may meet at the table to discuss like Hey you hoes. She said her mom didn't teach her. She taught herself. But I thought you said your mom sold first. No. She, I think she did, but her mom just didn't teach her. But maybe she felt as though that you still got the the aspiration to learn from watching her sew. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I think a I mean, lot if your of mom times... sew and you decide to learn how to sew, it's because someone was introduced to you still. So. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'm just a, I'm a person that's just like common sense. Even if she didn't all the way teach, that's like, for instance, I used to do hair. Because I, I had a baby at 14, so clearly, you know, I had to do shit that was not what that I was to make money because I couldn't clock in in the white job. So, I did hair in the kitchen. I put weaves in. I had friends who here I did. I still can do hair. I can do hair. I can do a wrap. I can do sew-ins. I can, I do make wigs. I can do anything. Right. But I never was a hairstylist. I never got a license. I never owned no shop. So my daughter decided to do hair. No, I didn't sit down and teach her how to do hair, but it was introduced to her. But do yeah. I feel jealous about it? Fuck no. Like, I'm going to invest in her brand and her business. And because you're, her, you're your own person. Mm -hmm. I don't care about that. I want yeah, my kids. Your own you know what, I, what makes me laugh? And that's why you do what you do. And that's what I'm saying. For me, it's the same way. Like, we said on the other live Hannah, that we got order at the bottom for Hannah. I answered it. Did somebody says She said, well, you should. Go ahead. Oh, man. Look, we only got 25 seconds remaining. Really? We got to get off. That yes. Is? Okay, hold up. Let me get off real quick, and we got to come back. Damn. All right.